Yeah, I was just thinking the other day, um, I was talking to someone, they asked how I got in touch with Family Promise and um, how long I've been involved. And they had seen on my LinkedIn that I worked for Family Promise twice. And I said, yes, I was, um, I was introduced to Family Promise, I think it was in 2007, when you were um, trying to get the Just Neighbors curriculum out in congregations and with civic organizations in Union County. So I was telling them all about just the great program that Just Neighbors was. And my first boss at Family Promise, um, Frank McCann, who was such a wonderful mentor to me. Um, and I couldn't believe that that was, you know, so long that that was like more than 10 years. And then I, I got to come back and. Yeah, it's really wonderful. And he so appreciated all that you did, you know, for Just Neighbors. It was fantastic. Yeah. So we've then known each other since about 2000, about 2007. And that's right. That's Great. right. Been able to know Family Promise working with Just Neighbors as a volunteer and now in my role full time, which is awesome. So and welcome I to mind. See that um, it's come full circle too when we're more involved in advocacy than ever before, which is so important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely fantastic. It's from what Family Promise started, it's become such a over the years, the past more than three decades. Um, such an all-encompassing response. Um, and, you know, I've always been hearing the story of how Family Promise began and uh, what inspired you to start Family Promise. And for, you know, the new pe people who might be new to Family Promise as executive directors of affiliates, volunteers, um, and new supporters, we've had so many great new supporters over the last few months and over the last few years. And I'd love for them um, to hear the story of Millie and the sandwich um, and how that initial seed was planted with you. Okay. Well, it really was a seed when I look at Family Promise today and how it's expanded. It's expanded through the compassion and uh, innovation of volunteers and affiliates across the country. But the seed started, well, if I really look at the seed, I always wanted to make a difference and I originally wanted to become a nurse and that path was blocked. But then I, after college, I had a seven year career in marketing and advertising and that took me into New York regularly for meetings. And it was hard to walk a city block without seeing someone who was obviously homeless but everybody seemed to pass those people by, and I did too. But then I began to look at it through different eyes, or maybe you'd say my heart was opened. And one day I was on my way to a meeting, and I was about to pass a woman who sat in front of Grand, front of Grand Central Station, where I'd passed many times before. She was an older woman in her 70s. She always looked down. She sat on a crate with her belongings around her. And this one late morning on impulse, I decided to go across the street and get a sandwich for her. And I was gonna drop it and run. And when I gave her the sandwich, she said, thank you, God bless you, I haven't eaten since yesterday. And I stood there talking to her, I learned her name. Her name was Melly. I told her my name. And as we continued to talk, I saw that these were two women who had some things in common because who hasn't known some loss or hurt? And I certainly had. And the more I talked to her, the disheveled appearance faded and it was just two people. And at that point, there was no real turning back. So I then told my two sons about Millie and my younger son, Doug, said, Mom, let's go bring sandwiches in to New York to find more people like Millie, so we did. And that began a two-year delivery of sandwiches every other Sunday to Port Authority Bus Terminal because we saw that in Port Authority Bus Terminal, people who were sitting um, on benches on a Sunday afternoon were not waiting for their bus, they were simply homeless. So it's just something that we did, you know. And then I, decided to um, see what was happening in my own county of Union County. 
and I met homeless families. And I didn't even know about family homelessness. I only knew about chronic homelessness in New York. So I was shocked to meet families who had been staying at shelters, turned away from shelters, living in their cars, and they had no place to go. And so at that point, I, um, no, I still had nothing in mind of this national organization at all. You'll see it evolved from the good will and compassionate hearts of many people. But I, plan I, I figured the first step had to be awareness. So I planned a conference on family homelessness in Union County, and I invited the religious community. And to my surprise, over 200 people came to Faith Lutheran Church in Murray Hill to hear about family homelessness. And then from there, um, you know, I'm going to get a drink of water. Of course. If you have any questions for me. But... Yeah. No, I, I love what you experienced, um, you know, on the street, on your way to a business. Meeting. You then had a, your family got involved and you had a curiosity about what was going on in your own, you know, town and summit in your own county of Union County. And you wanted to do something there. I, I love that. And as you said, you never imagined it would become a national thing. One one on one person and then one conference. Right, right. So that conference um, was so well attended and the energy was high. And so I didn't want just for people to leave the conference and say, oh, gee, you know, kids are uh, being tucked in the back seat of their cars at night because they have no place to call home. I wanted to do something. It just wasn't enough having a conference. So I um, had meetings every other Tuesday at Christ Church in uh, Summit, and people from the conference came, and we began looking for a building. You see, that was my original goal, was just was obvious that we needed shelter, but we couldn't find a building, and not one house of worship could be a full-time shelter. So after several weeks of looking and going nowhere, I said to everybody, what if we took turns? What if um, we had congregations take turns with each other and we found a place for the families to stay during the day? And so that resonated with the group. So for instance, Central Presbyterian Church in Summit, who started in 1986, is still doing it today but they would only do it about once a quarter. And that made a lot of sense. And I think that's been the staying power of the program. But what I didn't realize is that when people get involved, you know, spending the night, preparing a meal, sitting and talking to families, much growth would come from that. You know, whether uh, volunteers would help write resumes or perhaps employ someone in their company or, um, you know, help children with tutoring. So many ministries sort of grew out of that and affiliates themselves saw needs. And so they created affordable housing, transitional housing, car donation programs, clothing drives. I mean, so many things grew out of um, that original hosting. And that speaks to the compassionate hearts and the innovation of so many people across the country, 200,000 volunteers and um, 200 uh, affiliates nationwide, you know? So uh, it kind of has a life of its own. So I never ever said, let's create a national organization. It just evolved and my goal was really to find a building but what I really believe is God wanted us to build community because where there's community and caring all things are possible absolutely and what I love about family what you said that personal that person to person experience so um, you know when affiliate staff know the families when volunteers and clergy get to know the families and see all of the different um, challenges or needs and are able to help bring other pieces in the community and leverage their resources and connections. 
um, for families, it makes such a difference. Like you, you set out looking for one and you got so many buildings <laughs> and yes. people saw what was happening in the county and they saw that it was, it worked and brought many people together, um, which I think is great. And then so quickly, I mean, within two years, that first start, you, it, Family Promise was, was national, right? It was a pretty quick nationalization. The idea, the idea was national. It took about a year to develop, <clears throat> excuse me, the first um, Family Promise chapter, and it wasn't called Family Ch Promise at that point. It was called Interfaith Hospitality Network. And then Morris County expressed an interest. It's the nearby county to Union County, New Jersey, and Essex County. So I worked with them, and then I began getting calls from other areas. And I saw that, um, you know, this was definitely replicable, that there was a need all across the country for homeless families, for uh, shelter and services. And um, then the program expanded. And then a few years down the line, <clears throat> I hired Klaus Ehlers um, to run an interfaith component a family promise, and then he later um, uh, directed the development of affiliates, <clears throat> and then very quickly um, ran the whole operation of development and support. And then today, I happily um, passed the baton four years ago to Klaus, who, as you all know, is doing an amazing job. He's fantastic. Can't think of a more person. We um, just had our first night without a bed um, campaign oh, yeah. where we were sleeping yeah. out and also Klaus slept on his deck inside in a, in a fairly rainy night. <laughs> oh. uh, but that shows his commitment to, to the Absolutely. work. And I think Absolutely. that that's inspiring to me when I've met, you know, affiliate directors and staff that they're doing such amazing work and they're meeting families where they are with hospitality and non and, um, that, you know, that really sets us apart. And I've only been doing work for a short time in comparison. And so I'm curious if you have particularly, particular stories or any story or themes that stick out from your interaction either with, um, you know, affiliate leaders or with families that have always kind of stayed with you. Because doing this, you know, starting your own organization, being a founder, running a national organization, developing a board is incredible work, but exhausting and all of those things having those experiences with you know the people who are um on the ground doing the work and families whose lives are being formed um i'm sure that is very nourishing so i'm curious to hear some of your favorite memories well i guess a memory that's consistent when i talk to families is that um they don't talk about the experience of being sheltered or even the meals, what they talk about consistently is family promise changed my life. The mm. people, staff and volunteers were like family to me, more family sometimes than my own family. So it's yeah. interesting to see that while they came for shelter, they were renewed and they began to believe in themselves for the first time. Why? because so many people took the time to believe in them, whether they came and prepared a meal and dined with families or spent the night or listened to, you know, a, a mom who was sad that she had no, no permanent housing for, for her children. Uh, they made them in the loss of guests and that nurturing and support, mm. tremendous healing effect. I think there's a tremendous healing effect with promise and I'm not sure that you can say that shelters I think what's unique about family promise is a caring that's inherent and that caring changes lives I love that no that's great you're right the healing component is just as important as the mm -hmm. resume or you know the housing yeah. cert yeah yeah and when I look at Family Promise today and all the innovations in housing that's being created and the prevention and the sustainability, when you look back at all this, um, all these programs that have grown out of it 
are models which can help the country in preventing homelessness, providing services, and sustainability. So it's a wonderful ground for creating new programs and sharing them with not only other affiliates, but other communities. Family Promise is a leader in helping to end homelessness and helping families achieve sustainable independence. Nothing I could have dreamt of. Um, in fact, if somebody said, you're gonna go on to do this, I'd say, find somebody else. I have no training at this. I can't do this. I really would have said that. That's too much, mm. you have the wrong person. But then I realized, looking back, I just, uh, an important ingredient, ingredient is caring. And it was my compassion and how unacceptable it was for me to think about families with no homes that drove me on. So where maybe I lack specific talent, the compassion counted a lot to keep me going and then to find the right people. Uh, and I know that that's true of all the directors and people who get involved. It's a compassion and passion that drives you forward. Uh, it's just, it's, it's unacceptable in this country that uh, families or anyone has to be homeless. And we've developed like an army of compassionate people who continue to make a difference and now are advocating more than ever for change and the partners we now have in, uh, in the area of advocacy, it's making such a difference. It's really more than a dream come true for me. Um, it really, really is. And I get, looking back, I think that God really just used my um, passion and my persistence, <laughs> to, you know, to help start Family Promise. Affiliates are poised and ready to jump on challenges to um, innovate and, and create new solutions. So when families were staying in congregations and the congregations had to close, they figured out ways to get families into shelter situations so that they could, um, you know, self-isolate and be safe and take care of themselves. Um, worked with landlords to have temporary apartments. They um, worked with hotels to get temporary stays. Um, and they're really just constantly innovating in a very, very difficult time and find things for families. So I love that that spirit, that value of innovation has lasted for over years. Yes. It's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. And I know you've also mentioned because the families say it's such a healing experience being part of Family Promise, but also um, you hear so much about the clergy and the volunteers that are involved saying how much you know, they get from the experience that it's reciprocal and that it's a real companionship between, you know, the, the congregations that are hosting and the people that are involved and the families, um, you know, that are, that are staying in those congregations. And I'm curious to, to think, to hear your thoughts on, um, you know, when congregations open up back again, or even those who don't, what role, you know, the congregational world will have in serving families and how you always talk to them about um, what value it had to their congregations to be involved in Family Promise. Mm -hmm. Well, that's another important part of Family Promise. Not only are we helping families um, who are experiencing homelessness, but we're also helping congregations live out their faith. I know um, a pastor, a Methodist pastor, Bill Cook, once said, uh, Family Promise uh, used to be what we participated in. It now is who we are, you know. It has become such an integral part of his congregation. And I think that's true of many, many congregations. So my hope would be that when congregations open up and they're worshiping, that um, the rotational program would come back but perhaps it doesn't come back in full until we have a vaccine. But I would think once congregation services are back in full swing, I guess that's when we have a vaccine, then quite naturally, my hope would be 
that the congregations would want to participate in the rotational program since mm -hmm. it's been such a core of who they are. But meanwhile, they're doing such innovative things to help families in this COVID environment, you know, from virtual mentoring to bringing food to grocery shopping to all kinds of things. Yeah. No, that's what we've seen. We've not only seen the, the congregations be so creative in how they've responded to this in terms of getting gift cards for families, delivering meals, um, making sure families have everything they need during this challenging time. Um, but so many, you know, corporations, new corporate partners have come forward. Uh, we've had, you know, people with small businesses saying they want to donate a proceed, you know, portion of their proceeds from their businesses. We've had Instagram influencers and so many others who, uh, you know, recognize what happened during COVID was is so traumatic for everyone. But imagine not having your own home where you can control your space and your um, sanitation and your hand washing and your children. And uh, I think yeah. it really opened up a lot of people's eyes to the fact that it's so stressful anyway <laughs> to have this happening. But imagine being in shelter or being between housing. Um, imagine losing your, your employment at this time and losing housing. And so we just heard overwhelming people that they wanted to help. And it was so inspiring and I think opens up so many more new possibilities to how we use space, shelter people, how we provide um, you know, the holistic services that Family Promise is good, you know, at delivering. And so that, to me, I think is, is really exciting that, um, you know, for, for three decades, you created this amazing organization that was then poised during a time like COVID to be a solution, like you said, to a huge issue in the country and a real leader in, um, in creating solutions for families that are struggling. Um, and yeah. I, go ahead. No, well, I, it's the very people involved have gone on to create solutions and find innovative ways to continue to help families um, during COVID. And uh, that helps make all the difference. Yes. And we've had so many different, and um, getting involved. And that's one thing I've always loved about it is that, you know, the model that you created was so that all, uh, an entire family could volunteer together. It's not just the parents going off to do something. You have to find something for your kid. I hear all the time of volunteers say that they do it as a family they go with their children, um, their kids play with other kids. Uh, and it's, it's really relational, but it's also multi-generational. And I think that that's a really powerful experience for a family to to do something like that together and to yeah, have that at home. Yeah, I think that's very unique where the whole family can volunteer together and families really appreciate that. And you hear stories over time of how, like I think of uh, Kim Delatora, coordinator of Family Promise at Faith Lutheran, you know, her, her regularly volunteered with her and her oldest daughter went on to medical school and she said she was just used to helping people through family promise. And so there's, you never know how that experience of volunteers, volunteering leads people on um, to go on, youth to go on and get involved in helping people in various ways. Yeah, and taking it back one last, Story I want I'd love for you to tell and then we'll take questions um, but taking it back to your family since we started out talking about your family I love that both your children you boys you went into the city delivered sandwiches then also after you started family promise I think I remember you saying your your dining room table at Thanksgiving or holidays was hardly you always had someone who didn't have a place to go in your in your home with your family I'd love for you to a little bit more about it. I think that's really powerful of welcoming people in too. Well, some people would say I was a little crazy to do that, but that <laughs> I was bringing sandwiches into New York. I got to know 
homeless people very well. And so before Thanksgiving, we would go in and give invitations to people in Port Authority bus terminal who we knew for Thanksgiving dinner and bus tickets from um, New York Summit. And um, they would come, neighbors would help, and we would have Thanksgiving dinner there. There would be seven or eight people who were experiencing homelessness back to my house, and um, they were the best Thanksgiving you know, dinners we ever had. And it just made sense to me. I'm not really all that social to begin with. I mean, I'm social around a cause, but I'm not sure. social. But having people from New York who were experiencing homelessness just made sense to me, you know. And um, yeah, there was something we did and at Christmas we would go in and bring Christmas presents, wrap gloves, uh, hats, and wallets, and give them out to people. Um, yeah, but all that was just part of the journey leading me up to, you know, starting Family Promise. And everybody has different roads to um, getting involved, and, mm -hmm. you know, that that was mine. I love that. And you know, you know that I had a spinal cord injury about 15 months ago, and I'm making great progress. And um, I'm very, um, very pleased with the progress I'm making. But when you slow down like this, you have a chance to take in before I was go, 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 not nonstop. Mm -hmm. But now that I've slowed down a bit, um, I have to time to take things in and when I speak to guests former guests on the phone um, and they tell me of all that family promises meant to them sometimes and they can't see me of course because we're, we're not doing um, a zoom call you know my eyes fill ears and I'm just so grateful that it's interesting now the family promise network that and when I had my injury, so many people mm. responded. So I'm able to take in much better now. It's odd, but the magnitude and the impact Family Promise is having, and um, I I'm just really in awe. And it, you know, it it just fills me up with love, which was not so possible before, and I'm sure maybe some directors can relate that you're just go, 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 go. But now I can take it in. So it's like family promise is now a gift to me at this time of my healing. Oh, I love that. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> One more question. So I love this question. What advice would you give to someone who wants to get involved in their community but doesn't know how to start? Want to get involved in their community? Well, first they have to think about what cause resonates with them because you must be passionate about, are you talking about a family promise or just something in general? I think in general, someone who has that little itch but doesn't know where to start. Yeah. Well, you might start volunteering at with different nonprofits, you've got to involve yourself in a cause that resonates with you that you feel passionate about. And then let's say it has something to do with um, uh, children, then you would volunteer at different, different um, nonprofits that provide services for children. But you must be compassionate about the cause. And then if you find out what the cause is, maybe it's um, children that have special needs then you've got to find out what's going on in the community and do your own needs assessment and get experience and then share your vision if you have a vision for what you want to do with a few others and then call a community meeting once you have a basic vision of what you want to do and then people can come around that vision and then from there you can grow by building a board and everything else you need to do. But the first thing is to be passionate 
about the cause. Because if you're passionate about the cause, you'll be able to sell it. If you're not, well, you would not be able to sell it so well and you'd ultimately be wasting your time. So find a cause that you're passionate about. That drives everything.